Hello and welcome to pmblounge.com. Today we are talking about functional and non-functional requirements. So this is from the scope management knowledge area and we have talked about uh, this knowledge area. We have uh, spoke about the basics of scope management. We have also discussed one of the processes, the first process in this knowledge area, which is plan scope management process. The link to the entire scope management playlist will be available in the description below. So you can go over there and learn a thing or two more about the scope management uh, knowledge area again as always with videos like these we have detailed articles the link to the detailed article will also be present in the description when you go over and read the detailed article you'll be able to find other detailed articles on scope management knowledge area so let's talk about functional and non-functional requirements before that let me tell you that the next process that we are going to discuss in the scope management knowledge area is known as collect requirements now before we go to collect requirements it's important to understand what requirements are and two of the most uh, i'd say popular and uh, the kind of requirements that you should definitely know about are functional requirements and non-functional requirements now some may argue that there are other kind of requirements like product requirements stakeholder requirements business requirements and stuff like that but from scope management perspective and from the perspective of the process which is known as collect requirements it's important to know just these two types of requirements which are functional and non-functional so let's start with functional requirements and try to understand what it really means so functional requirements basically form the very behavior of the product right behavior of the product this is how the product is going to behave this is uh, basically the characteristic of the product this is basically the functionality of the product so if somebody is giving you functional requirements for your project what that means is you are being given how the product of that project is going to work how the product of that project is is going to function and will be used by the users right so these are known as functional requirements and let's look into some more examples so that it will be clearer for you to understand new features bug fixes new behavior these are the examples of functional requirements so let's say you have a product already out in the market let's say product uh, 1.0 is already out in the market and you are now your next project is to work on product 2.0 what would be the new features right in that product what are the bugs that you're fixing from product 1.0 which will you know be fixed what are the bugs uh, which were present in product 1.0 which will be fixed in product 2.0 what is the new behavior that you are building in the product right what are certain requirements that are altering that existing behavior and you know and in including a new behavior in that product 2.0 so these kind of requirements are functional requirements like i mentioned earlier these requirements basically tell you how the product of this project is going to behave so when you have functional requirements in your project it is all about the behavior of the product let's move on and look into non-functional requirements now non-functional requirements are implicit expectations from the product so these are not explicitly mentioned requirements now this is where it gets tricky right so these requirements might not be explicitly mentioned in your requirements document right these are implicit in nature and the thing about these is that since these are expected features and not specifically documented requirements so you may not have them in your requirements document these are expected features they are also known as quality attributes now let's take an example right let's say your project is about making a, a, a let's say a vehicle right you're making a car that is your project now you're making the car for the first time that is why it's a project if you're making hundreds of cars then obviously it's it's operations you're doing it again and again right 
So if you're making a car for the first time, that's a project. And to be the implicit expectation from that car is that that car needs to move, right? That car needs to run. That car should be able to move and take a passenger from uh, location A to location B. That's an implicit expectation of that car. So how good that expectation is met is, is, is is what makes a part of non-functional requirements, right? So nobody is going to give you a requirement and you know, nobody is going to call you and say, hey, hello, Joe, you're working on this new car. Uh, the first requirement of this car is that it should be able to take passengers from location A to location B. Nobody is going to give you that kind of requirement because that could sound like a functional requirement, but is an implicit expectation from the product of your project, right? So let's take another example. Let's say you are developing a website. A website is expected to load as soon as possible, right? So if if your if if you know a user hits up you on your website, he should not be waiting for five minutes for that website to load. That is an implicit expectation from the product of your project. So these kind of requirements are non-functional requirements and these are also known as quality attributes. So let's look into some of the examples of non-functional requirements. There you have it, performance, reliability, error handling, ease of use are some of the examples of non-functional requirements, right? So the performance should be good like i mentioned in case of uh, the website right it should load faster that is a performance uh, requirement right that is not something that uh, uh, anyone who's giving you requirements is going to you know make you uh, note that down in your quality doc in your requirements document that is expected this is an implicit expectation a reliability let's say that website has uh, let's say that website has uh, e-commerce integration users need to give their um, you know their uh, credit card or debit card details right the website needs to be reliable it should be something which is secure and be it should be you know secure enough to handle uh, this kind of sensitive information that users are going to put in so if there is a requirement from the customer that your website should have e-commerce integration and it should be secure enough. Nobody is going to tell you uh, that it sh how secure it should be, right? It should be reliable. That that's all that that can be said. But the level of reliability that is implicit and that is expected out of your product, right? Error handling. If if you know something goes wrong, how the product handles those errors. That is also an implicit expectation. Ease of use is again an implicit expectation. In our example of the car, right? You know, you cannot go back to the archaic uh, models of, uh, you know, uh, making it difficult for folks to change gears in the car, right? Um, if it's not an automatic transmission car, if it's a manual transmission car, you cannot go back uh, to, 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 the archaic times when the gears would be next to uh, the the steering right that is not ease of use that is not providing ease of use so these are kind of requirements which are implicit in nature these are the kind of requirements which you know won't show up explicitly in the requirements document but is expected out from a project the problem here arises is the next uh, uh, is, is, is my next point and that problem is of scope creep. Now, non-functional requirements, you know, of course, these are quality attributes, but in, in, in the disguise of non-functional requirements, the scope should not be, you know, uh, increased. You should not be providing uh, certain features in the product which we are never asked of right so although performance reliability error handling ease of use is something the project team should be working on it's not something that increases the scope of the project itself so th that's a word of caution of course we'll talk more when we talk about scope creep later 
but though these were the examples of non-functional requirements and uh, this was all about functional and non-functional requirements that we had to discuss in this video so that's all that we had hope you learned about functional and non-functional requirements as always you can go over to pmblounge.com um, and read the detailed article on uh, this this topic uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and check us out on our social media facebook.com slash pmp lounge and twitter.com slash pmp lounge and as always do check out the website pmp lounge.com your number one free resource for pmp certification and project management industry information thank you